Hello, everyone. It's Sunday, and today, oh my God, it's it's two o'clock in the afternoon in the UK, and in Manila, it's ten o'clock at night. Um, welcome to a special episode of Ask the Drummer. Uh, today, I'm going to be sort of like young again. I'm going to be twenty-one again because um, this week's guest is actually the one who drummed on this album. I've actually got two, one without free and one without. But anyways, yeah, um, yeah, this is one of my all-time favorite albums ever. So um, yeah, so I'm really, really pleased that he's here today. And also when I was sort of like preparing my script, I realized that he actually sort of like sings as well. So we just got a very, very good voice. It was so brilliant. So I'm really, really excited to welcome um, Paul Quinn. There you go. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Are you all right? Hi, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. It's it's a uh, sun, Sunday. Well, it's Sunday afternoon, you know, which is a uh, Sunday morning for me, really. You know. Yeah, it's it's still very cold, though, isn't it? It's like I mean, it's still winter. I can't wait for spring. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah. I kind of like I kind of like the I kind of like the winter. You know, I like the I like the colors and stuff like that. You know. Well, do you want to just say hello to our friends who joined us live and also the yeah. people will be watching it later on YouTube? Yeah, hi everyone. You know, welcome to Ask the Drummer. Uh, <laughs> with Anna. With Anna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, before actually before we start, I want to say hello to Rob Jones. Uh Rob Jones, the drummer of the High Five and Wahid. Uh he's joined us live. Monty Mendigoria, he's um uh, got a podcast which I patterned this podcast on uh, called It's All About New Wave. Sean Dixon actually was on that It's All About New Wave podcast before. So hello, Monty. Neil Barker. Neil Barker is um, my colleague. I told you before that I work at Kingby Records. So he's yeah. joined us. I thought he wasn't going to be here, but, you know, Neil was here. So, um, yeah. right. So hello, everyone. Thank you so much um, for joining us live. Um, right, so we'll, we'll start. Um, welcome to Ask the Drummer. Um, episode 24 is all about you, Paul Quinn. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll start from um, the very beginning, which is like, um, were you born in Bells Hill? Is it, yeah. Are you from Bells Hill? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm from Bells Hill. Uh, I've always stayed in Bells Hill. Uh, always, yeah. yeah, still stay in Bells Hill, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I don't go out much in the town or anything like that, right enough, you know. Uh, maybe yeah. the local, maybe the local Tesco or, um, you know, the local shops, you know. But that, but that's about it, you know. I don't really, yeah. Um. But yeah, well, I was born in Bells Hill. Born in Bells Hill. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, when you think of Bells Hill, I realised this now. This actually um, the Soup Dragons, yeah, uh, Teenage Fan Club, yeah, and BMX Bandits. I mean, yeah. these are like the holy trinity of Bells Hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For a town its size, you know, I think it, I think it done fairly. I think it produced um, fairly well. Regards music, anyway, you know. I think it's quite yeah. famous. It's quite famous for football as well, you know. Um, you know, Billy McNeil, the Celtic, the 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 first British player actually that lifted the European Cup or the Champions League trophy, uh, was was born in Bells Hill. You know, Jimmy Johnson was born a couple of miles away. You know, Matt Busby's from Bells Hill, so it's quite a it's quite a sort of um, you know, it's produced. It's pro yeah, 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 yeah. It's a it's a sort of typical working class sort yeah. of town, you know, where I think the outlets were either football or music, you know, for kind yeah. of just normal working class people, you know. Well, I should have known about Bell's Hill uh, when I was young because another one who's from Bell's Hill is Sheena East. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she stayed around the corner from me. Her name, <laughs> her real name's Sheena Orr. Oh, right. So, so it's not Sheena Easton then? No, she's called Sheena Orr. She, I think she was in school with my brother, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. She's massive in the Philippines in the 80s. Yeah. Right? 
we we loved Sheena Easton in the film. Oh wow! Yeah, I think and... I think I think Sheena loves herself as well. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, her style, and it's like the songs, like "Almost Over You" and "For Your Eyes Only" and "Telephone." I yeah, mean, the girls my age, when we were in high school, we all wanted to look like Sheena Easton because she was wow. just so beautiful. Wow, wow, <laughs> yeah. I mean, she did. You know, she, she uh, Sheena did really well for herself. You know, she. She 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 was great, you know. She did, yeah. you know. I'm not I'm not not great musical. I'm not, I'm not I don't own any <laughs> records or anything, you know. But um, you know, she did well. She, you know, she did, and just another person from Bell Cell that's yeah did really well, you know. And Charlene Spiteri as well uh, found out that she's also from Bell Cell. I don't um, know. If she's I don't know. If she's from Bell Cell. She's the the what I mean. There's. There's quite a lot of people born in Bells Hill because Bells Hill at that time, uh, are up until about maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago, maybe more, um, yeah. 30 years ago. Hello? Oh, there is. It's like we've lost them. <laughs> um... Yeah, uh, Bells, Hill, Bells Hill had a big maternity hospital. You know, so that was one of the sort of big maternity hospitals, you know, that, that and, and people from all over sort of Lanarkshire and parts of Glasgow and stuff like that were oh, born, okay. you know. Okay. So there's quite a lot of people born, you know, born in, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in Bell in Hill, you know, but I, I, I don't think Charlene's a, I don't know where Charlene well, comes from. I think, yeah. she come, I think she comes from Glasgow somewhere, you know. I don't think she's, right. yeah, I don't think she's from Bell Hill, you know. Okay, well, born, gonna, born in Bells Hill. Born in Bells. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I'd say that you're actually not the first Paul Quinn that was on Ask the Drummer, because um, my very first guests <laughs> on Ask the Drummer were the Queen brother, Queen, Queen brothers of the Orchids, like Paul Quinn and Chris Quinn. Um, okay. They were the first so like guests I had, and I remember my colleague. Um, Neil Barker, we actually caught like five Paul Quinns, sure. and we were we were a bit confused because there's and there's like four of them are from Scotland. There's you, there's Paul Quinn of the Old Kids, there's Paul Quinn of Burgi Burgi. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I, I, often, I often get mistaken for uh, not not a. Not visually, but I often get mistaken. You know, people will contact me and say, yeah. "Are you releasing any music?" You know, uh, uh, I really love Bushy Bushy. You know, <laughs> are you the real Paul Quinn? You know, or are you the real Paul Quinn? You know, which always answer, which always answer, yes, I am actually, I am, <laughs> I'm Paul Quinn. You know, <laughs> there's also um, the football player, Scottish football player. I think like. Uh, Played in Motherwell. Yeah, yeah, that's that right, one. that's right. That guy played for Motherwell. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Paul Quinn as well. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah, a lot. There's, there's, there's a lot. Yeah. Well, there's also like an Irish band um, called No Sweat, and the singer of that band is also called Paul Quinn. So it was all like getting a bit confused. I mean, which one is the real Paul Quinn? But well, well, I can well I can genuinely say that I'm the real Paul Quinn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're well, all yeah. kind of the two dragons, which is yay. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I played with the soup dragons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, I also want to say hello to Guy Keegan. Guy Keegan is the drummer of the Railway Children. Uh -huh. Um, he's joined us live. And uh, um, Gilbert, who's in Manila, uh, he's also joined us live. He said hello, Paul. So, um, hiya, guys. Yeah, and of course my husband is always here because he's my technical support. So, <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> my husband is always watching. So, hello, um, hello, hello as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. So, um. Oh, sorry. And Richie Dempsey. Oh, oh Richie. Hi, Richie. Richie Richie's yeah, a good, yeah, Richie. Richie's a good friend. Good guy. Good sound. Great sound guy. Right. As well, you know. Yeah. So you play. Um. Uh, the Soup Dragons and uh, Teenage Fan Club. Did you play in BMX Bandits as well? Were no, I, no, I didn't actually. Um, I was, I, I never, 
I think I played one song one uh, during a show, but apart from that, I was never a member of the of a uh, BMX Bandits. No, 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 no. I think I was one of the very rare uh, Scottish musicians of that of that sort of scene that that that, that actually didn't play uh, with BMX Bandits. You know. Yeah. Oh, well, so it was like. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> it's like oh, what Mitlo what Meatloaf said. <laughs> or which, you know, sadly, I mean a few days ago, I mean Meatloaf. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so really really yeah, sad news. Really you know? sad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you like it? Did you like his records? Were you a fan? You what a was fan? that? Were you a fan of Meatloaf? I can mean I, I mean I wouldn't say no, I'm not going to sort of sit and say, oh, you know, I thought it was amazing. I mean, I didn't, you know, that record really didn't do anything for me. You know, it was kind of, it was a bit too rock opera for me, you know, um, uh, uh, um, and a bit too, um, you know, musical, stage musical um, type type thing, you know, that, that's yeah, how, like that's how I was. It's not, not even opera, like kind of just stage musical, you know, and I'm not yeah. really, I'm not really a big fan of, uh, you know, there's some great sort of classic musicals, you know, where there's some brilliant songs and stuff like that. But, uh, uh, like, you know, musicals, uh, even uh, film musicals, I'm not really a, it's not really my thing, you know. My daughters and my wife, my daughters and my wife are absolutely fanatical about uh, music. music, musicals, but I'm, you know, I'm the odd one out in the house, you know. Yeah. Um, so, um, what was Bells Hill like when you were growing up, especially the music scene in Bells Hill? I mean, I think Bells Hill, I think the music scene was, you know, I've always known Norman and always knew Sean and Douglas. Um, and I think those guys, those, those guys sort of went into Glasgow more often. Uh, they they, they kind of hung out in Glasgow and stuff like that, where I was kind of more part of the... Um, you know the kind of parochial music scene. I was sort of, uh, you know, I, I was in a, I was in bands with like friends and stuff like that. And um, whereas those guys were sort of going into Glasgow and were part of that whole Splash One um, scene, you know, like, and from that came the Pastels and uh, 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 Primal Scream and Jesus and Mary Chain and and all that scene. So. I mean, but I mean, I you know, looking back on it and stuff like that, you know, I, I mean, I had a really, you know, Bell Hill's a kind of rough town and a rough wee town and stuff like that, you know. But I, I, I thought it was great, you know. It always had a healthy, um, you know, always had a kind of healthy music scene as far as like, you know, there was loads of kids into like punk rock and. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, you know, when the ska scene sort of kicked in and stuff like that, you know, um, that th there was always sort of groups of kids that were, um, sort of drawn, drawn to those, um, um, types types of music, you know. So, the, yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, it, it, it was great, you know, and sort of we just, you know, we just all hung out, and it was yeah. kind of cool, you know. It was kind of cool. It was you know, well, you did know, you have? Lots of live music venues in Bells Hill, or do you have no? To go to no, I mean there was there wasn't any. I mean there, yeah. I mean I, I, I suppose that um, the one that the one that was really famous, or certainly sort of famous, and there was a lot of bands played. It was at, at a place called the Hatton Rig Hotel, um, which was great. You know, I mean, I remember seeing God. I mean, I remember seeing the Pastels, the Vaselines. Um, you know, the Soup Dragons, I think, played it. You know, BMX Bandits obviously played it. Yeah. Um, I mean, even things like, you know, I remember seeing Frankie Miller, um, you know, at, at the Hatton Rig, and, and, you know, there was loads and loads of bands sort of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. played it. And there was loads of local bands, you know, where you were, you know, it was a place that you could hire, you could hire the room, you know, and um, and you could put your own concerts, you could put your own gigs on. Oh, which, right. which which was always good, you know. So the the hand rig was really great. Was really great yeah. for that, you know. And, but yeah. Have you have you always been so like into drumming? I mean, after listening to your solo albums, I mean, we're going to talk about the primary five later on. But after so like listening to them, 
you've got such an amazing voice. <laughs> it was so like thick. But have you always been into so like drumming, or did you start off as a like a singer yourself? Or no, 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 no. I mean, I always um no, I was always just a, I always seen myself as a drummer, um, and I always felt more comfortable um musically. I always felt more comfortable um being involved with other people's songs. You know, I always I always felt that um I had a good you know. A good understanding of music, a good understanding of song, you know. So I think I think that um, that that I felt uh, more comfortable being, uh, you know, sort of being able to work on other people's music, and sort of oh. just add, adding, you know, sort of I, I, I don't know whether it was feel or whatever, you know. But I've always been a very song based drummer, you know, as opposed to I'm not really technical. I'm not really a technician. As a drummer, yeah. um, you know, I I only had one drum lesson ever. I've only oh. taken I've only ever taken one drum lesson. I wasn't really yeah. interested, you know. I wasn't really interested in, um, you know, I wasn't really interested in learning paradiddles and and <laughs> stuff like that. You know, it just never interested me at all. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I always like to just hear a piece of music, you know, and yeah. And, yeah. and and just sort of and and play. Then, what what I feel natural, yeah. um, as opposed to being kind of studies and stuff like that. I would be studies of the song, uh, and play the song rather than, um, you know, listening to what I'm playing, uh, per se. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, but, but I never sang. I never. I never. Um, I wasn't interested in. I wasn't when I was in the Soup Dragons. When I was in Teenage Fan Club. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't even interested in writing songs, you know. That never, uh, you know, I, I was. Oh, I never interviewed. Yeah. No, yeah. Because, no. I mean, the Soup Dragons was really Sean's thing, you know. So Sean, oh, yeah. would, Sean, Sean would come in with the song. Sean would kind of know what he wanted, um, and 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 I, and I was there just to sort of. I, I was there to give. To play for Sean, yeah, you know what yeah, what yeah. he wanted, you know, and so obviously, so in that process, you you kind of play what you're doing as well, you know, and you add what you're adding to the song, um, and it was the same with and it was the same with Teenage Fan Club, you know, with with Norman Raymond and Gerard. I never interfered with the songwriting process, you know. They were songwriters; they had an idea of what they wanted. Uh, what the feel was like, what the tempo yeah. was like, you know, and it was just my, it, it, it was kind of just my job to deliver that. To deliver, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I and and I'm, I was really, you know, that was my thing, you know. I was quite, I was absolutely happy to do that, you know. And yeah. So was, was the Soup Dragons your first band? Was it no, you? no, I was in a couple of bands before that, you know, just sort of local bands and stuff like that, but nothing. Uh, no bands that sort of really did anything. Um, you know, we never put any records out or anything. We were just sort of local bands to the area and stuff like that. Um, Sean actually heard through... It was... The, how I joined the Soup Dragons was... Um, it was a friend of mine who um, had been speaking to Norman from Teenage Fan Club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he and Norman told... Terry, who's sadly passed away now, he was my drum tech for a for a, a good number of years. He was my drum tech when I worked with the Soup Dragons, and he passed away about two years ago. Oh, sorry. Um, and um, uh, so so it was Terry that actually said to me, you know, um, Sean, you know that Sean wanted to speak to me, uh, and I never really, I kind of knew Sean, you know, I knew who he was, and but I, yeah. I had. I had more of a kind of, I had more of a relationship or a, or a kind of friendship with Norman and Douglas, as opposed to Sean. Sh you know, sure, because at that time as well, the Soup Dragons were doing quite well. With regards, you know, they were doing well with like a, you know, and a sort of hang ten period. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so, yeah. they, so, so you never really seen Sean because I think they, I think those guys were, I think at that time. They were actually doing really well, you know. They yeah. were they were yeah. touring and stuff like that. So I never really seen Sean um, that much, and, and 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 it was just that that meeting of friends that 
uh, that, no, that that sort of told me that Sean was want to speak to me, you know. Oh, and I just, yeah. And I just yeah, met. Cause... Sorry. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, because um, you you're you're not the original drummer of the Soup Dragons. No, no, um, Ross, Ross, Ross Sinclair. Yeah, Ross Sinclair. Yeah. Being from the Philippines, I mean, we love soft as your face. Yeah, I mean, with that. <laughs> I mean that whole period of the Soup Dragons yeah, was, uh, yeah. was really brilliant, you know. I mean, yeah. I, I mean that, you know, without doubt, you know, Sean knows how to write a pop tune, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, he really is. He's a he's a great pop writer. He's a great writer actually, um, and he's a really good, you know. He's he's Sean's a really smart guy, you know. He knows what he's doing. He always has been, you know. I, I mean, even. Um, when I joined the band, you know, he was Sean was very focused on kind of what, what he wanted, what he wanted, and stuff like yeah, that. You, you know, did. yeah, and that's you know, and he always he's always had that. As I say, I've not spoken to Sean for a number of years, you know. Um, yeah. But I mean, obviously, after the Soup Dragons, it was a high fidelity, and and then he, he went on a a. Hi, Pi Sean, and sort of his DJ. Like and, DJ uh, and yeah, and I mean, he's you know, yeah. and I know I know a lot of people in that world, you know, and and um, and you know that by all accounts, that he's very good at what he does, you know, and that doesn't surprise me at all, you know, that that doesn't surprise me, you know, he's a talented guy, Sean, you know. Yeah, well, it's actually when I heard "I'm Free," that's when. Uh, actually got into the Soup Dragons. Although I do know them from um, um, the early ones with Songs sure. With Place. Sure. When I heard I'm Free, I was living in the Middle East at the time. And I thought, oh my God, this is just so good. And like I said, Love God when it was released. Yeah. That was like one of my most favorite albums ever. Right. And yeah. I just found out, I just found, that's actually when you joined um, the Soup Dragons, it was during I'm free. Well, I'm free. Right? Yeah, well, I'm free. You know, um, I kick off the hits, man. <laughs> I'm free was the first. <laughs> I'm free was the first thing that I recorded with the Soup Dragons. Yeah, yeah. That was the very first. That was the very first song um, that that um, that I recorded with the Soup Dragons, and it, that was just. I mean, I can remember that day when when Sean came into the rehearsal room. And you know, he, he just asked, you know, he says, Is any of you guys heard that I'm free by the stones? And um yeah. I, I, I could I could remember it, but I think they only ever played it live once. I think they only ever played it live at Hyde Park. Yeah. Um was it a B side or something? It was, it was a B side, a... if I'm not wrong, I think it was a B side of Get Off My Cloud, which was released right. only in America. Um but um, and Sean had sort of mentioned, does anybody know this? And Jim um, McCulloch yeah, in yeah. instantly, instantly played that riff. You know, the start that rat that riff at the start. Jim says, "Is this it?" And that was it. And we just started playing. We, we just started playing the tune. And I think about yeah. literally, I think about three or four day, days later, we found ourselves in Livingston Studios in London. Um, recording that track, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, um, I think I, th I believe it was George Schilling, was the was the producer, a guy called George Schilling, um, okay. and 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 that that is just that is the story of I'm free. Uh, I mean, I mean, it was really nothing more than to us. It was just like a, a cover version, but I suppose sort of in production and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of turned into this. It turned into this other thing, you know, and yeah. Uh, it's just so amazing because it just reminds me of that time when I'm actually I was I was young, and I know I was so like say I was young, I was free, and I was so like working. I had money there. I was so like I'm free to do what I want, you know, like yeah, any no, time. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it was a really crazy time that you know because we were. I think I think at that time there was I think if I'm not wrong I believe that um, Love God was had actually been released as an album 
Yeah. And yeah. and I think what the I think what the record label did was they recalled it and put I'm free on it. And put I'm free on, yeah. I've got yeah. those two albums, one with and one without. Yeah, one with, <laughs> yeah that's right. I mean uh, so I mean the the you know it had been it had been recorded. Um they, they kinda it had been recorded because they gave me they gave me all the demos. That's what I learned uh, the tracks from when I joined the band. But yeah. we had actually a tour lined up. There was a tour all, already lined up. Um, and when I'm free, I think we did, I think we did a sort of small British tour, and then we had a break, and then there was more dates added when the release with I'm free on it came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and it was just such a bizarre. It was such a bizarre thing because the venues that we were playing, there was as many people outside the venues as there was inside the venues. You know, you could see it. You could see this thing growing. You know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and it just went. It just went from there. You know. So I mean, I think I'm brief. You know, it certainly. Um, you know, it was just one of those track. It was just one of those tunes that was yeah. that, that people got. The you know, people, and, yeah, people really, really loved. And you were on top of the pops a few times as well during on free. Now, yeah, I've been, watching, I've been watching <laughs> it on YouTube, and I've noticed that there's this shirt. It's sort of like a black and white shirt. One yeah. time, it, I don't know what it is, but one time it's Sean wearing it, and then the next it's uh, Jim McCulloch wearing it, and then I've just seen a photograph of you wearing a similar shirt. So. No, I'm, I mean, well, I think I think the one that Sean had, mm. uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know how I remember this shit, um, but I, 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 but I think that sort of, I, I don't know if it was the same. Well, it certainly wasn't the same shirt. <laughs> um, you know, uh, and and I think the one that Sean had, uh, I think that I think perhaps that was a black and white photograph of a, a kind of and a, of a kind of striped shirt because I think the one that Sean had, it kind of resembled a, there's a. There's an Argentinian football team called Penarol. Um, oh, okay. And it, and it kind of it, the shirt that Sean had on the the. Sh- I, or a shirt that Sean had um, resembled that penarol top, um, and I think that Jim's. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But I mean, mine's, mine's is just a black and white shirt that probably resembled a Juventus top. You know. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You know. So, I just yeah. thought you. Were, I was just some kind of a uniform that. No, 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 no. You, you weren't no. wearing it all at the same no. time. But I mean, we were. I mean, we were. I mean, we were fucking poor, you know. But we weren't that poor, you know. We were. <laughs> We certainly weren't sharing a shirt or anything, you know. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know. Let me just say hello to um, Dubia Frederick. Dubia's in California. Hello, Dubia. Thanks for joining us. Hi, man. Um, yeah, and Grant Walker in Liverpool. He's um, the drummer of the West uh, Western Promise. Hello, Hi, Grant. Man. Um, yeah, and Neil said thanks for confirming that. Uh, I wasn't sure if you'd played on Backwards, Dog, Crotch, Deep Trash, and Mother Universe, but you did play on those songs. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I did play. I did play on those songs. I certainly played them live, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but when, when you were touring um, during that period, did you also do Soft As Your Face? Or did people sort of like ask you to do them being that? No, I think, I think, I mean, it's such a long time ago, you know. Um, but I think <laughs> I, I think we did. Yeah, I mean, I think we did um, tracks from the sort of period well, preceding myself when I, before I joined the band. We did, yeah, yeah. Uh, particularly in the initial tours. You know, um, when I joined the band, you know, we did we did uh, play a lot of um, the earlier the, the earlier, earlier tracks. Songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Great um, songs, yeah. Yeah, um, Neil also said that Love God was the first CD he bought when he got his first CD player. I mean, it's like that oh, well. album is just so amazing. Um, oh, I also, yeah. want, <laughs> I also want to say hello to Kaz Kasahara. Um, hello from Tokyo. Oh, hello. hello. Oh, Kaz. <laughs> uh, yeah, hiya, Kaz. <laughs> yeah. But um, the Soup Dragons, they were massive in America. And I mean, yeah. you know, 
Um, yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. they were. Yeah, they were yeah. massive. Yeah, I mean, they were. They were. They were. Yeah, you yeah. Were nominated the MTV Music Awards, and this is yeah. against. I mean, this is like against Nirvana. Yeah. Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Um, Pearl Jam. Yeah. So that's like America versus Bell's Hill. <laughs> it was. It was. Uh, it was. I. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean, we, we took the. You, you know. I think we took the battle to America. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone, I don't, I don't, it just as it so happened, you know, I, I, it wouldn't have mattered if it was, you know, the fucking Beatles, you know, I don't think, <laughs> any, I don't think any, I don't think anyone was, was, was getting it apart from Nirvana that year, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, it was just one of those things, but, but it was amazing that, she, that I can remember being at the MTV Awards and all that, you know, yeah. and I remember, um, you know, the, uh, you know. Uh, Chris, I can remember Chris Novoselic no, knocking himself out with uh, his bass when he threw it on there. <laughs> you know, oh. like, and, and, um, you know, and uh, you know, and uh, seeing Elton John and you know, uh, wow. see, seeing Guns and Roses on, oh like, my god, <laughs> two fucking stages. You know, it's like those, like, like that band couldn't be any more grandiose. You know, yeah, yeah. they were rubbish. That was yeah. that was the thing as well, and they weren't very good, you know. Well, no, well, no, Guns, well, no, Guns, well, Guns and Roses weren't very good at all. Actually, you know, well, yeah. Nirvana were brilliant, you know. They, they, I mean, they were a pro, they, they a proper group, you know, and they were they were on song that evening, you know. So yeah, well, Nirvana yeah. won it. Yeah, uh, they won the war, but I think it would have been nice as if so, like. If you had won it, if the soup dragons were won, so it's like you know, yes. I <laughs> know oh, it would have been lovely. It would have been lovely. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think there's any denying that. That, that uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, an MTV award, you know. Yeah. Well, before I ask you about teenage fan club, there's one thing that I ask you. I asked you this before, and um, you got a lifetime ban from the BBC. <laughs> Is it? I, I don't. Sorry, I I shouldn't really laugh about it. <laughs> no. But, um, <laughs> yeah, because um, I've, seen, I've seen the documentary before, but uh, sure. actually, when I was doing this, I've um, looked it up again, and I saw I watched it recently. Yeah, and it's about you and Sean talking to Lorraine Kelly, and yeah. I've forgotten the name of the, the other presenter. The other Richard guy. Richard Keys was the other guy. Richard, oh, <laughs> Richard, Richard Keys, who Richard Keys, who went on to. Um, I think he went on to do Sky Sports for a long number of t uh, years um, until he get, uh, you know, he get caught being a bit, uh, you know, uh, not not very pleasant speaking about women, you know, uh, you know. I think I think there was a few things he sort of says about women, or a oh. particular woman, a uh, woman, sorry, that um, get caught on camera, you know, uh, and. <laughs> And uh, I think Sky Sport were like, okay, shoe Richard, you know. He, so, so Richard, uh, yeah, Richard uh, Keys get himself locked out, you know. Oh God! So, um, right. So, Sean, <laughs> well, going back to this interview, we're sort of like saying, um, because it, it was a documentary about, I think, Scotland music in Scotland. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sean was saying that um, you got. Uh, escorted by the security, and then you were told that you're banned for life. And yeah. I was like thinking, why? I mean, I mean, you didn't even do. It. You was. I think the only thing is you weren't answering the questions. You were so like just chatting, just the two of you, so like that. But yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, that, you know, like uh, banned yeah. from for life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think. I mean that. I mean that morning was kind of crazy, you know. Um the story the sto the real the story is that um that we had the, the night before we had literally just finished a, a, a massive European tour and we were in we had at the end of the the the, the tour we had you know everybody they had went out and so we were all in a uh, some place some venue in London or whatever you know um and uh, the, the the tour manager said to me, you know, you need to go to do this BBC uh, breakfast TV interview. 
and I never really did interviews. Um, it was norm. It was normally Jim and Sean. But anyway, I think Jim was seriously inebriated. You know, I think we, I think with Jim was in a car. You know, I think Jim was really drunk, and I and, and I think she was as well. Although I'm not too sure. But anyway, I got asked to go along um, with Sean. You know, and at that time, I think Sean was on a crazy tequila trip. You know, <laughs> um, uh, you know he liked he liked tequila. Um, at that at that particular time, it did anyway. And um and 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 and, um, and I really liked weed, you know, um and and so that so there had been a lot of weed smoked, man, you know, there was a there was a lot of weed smoked. <laughs> Let's just say that, um, and we went to do we went to do this interview at uh, six o'clock in the morning. So we basically hadn't been to bed, you know. We were up, we were up all night, you know. We we, we literally get a, a a car came and picked us up from the venue that we were. Sort of partying out, if you like, um, and uh, the questions were just fucking nonsense. You know, their questions were. Just, I can remember that, you know, and um, I can remember them. I can also remember, uh, <laughs> and I think this sort of set the tone for the whole evening. I remember Timmy Mallet, who had who had sort of stalled the top three. I think we'd got to sort of number three or four. I can't remember. And Timmy Mallet was number one with a song called It's a Bitsy. Oh, it's a Bitsy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my so, God. So, so, so Timmy Mallet was, you know, we met Timmy Mallet in this sort of foyer when we were sitting waiting to go on, you know. And, it, 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 you know, and I can remember him being this really annoying wee guy, you know. <laughs> Just, I mean, it was exactly the, it was exactly the same <coughs> guy. Was on the video? So, like... Yeah. That it's a bit <laughs> just this really annoying uh, guy, you know, and and uh, you know, he was just really annoying, you know, and, and I think, um, <laughs> I think there was a few words between us, um, and then we went on and 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 did this interview with uh, Richard Keys and Lorraine Kelly, and 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 the thing that I can always remember about that morning is at the beat. You know, you don't really see this, but at their feet, there's like a hair dryer and deodorant and hair brushes and blah blah blah. You know, and that's between the breaks. They'll fix their hair and yeah. But what I did notice was was Richard Keys had a short sleeve shirt on, um, and his his arms were really hairy. You know, <laughs> his really hairy arms. You know, and um, and I remember. I re <coughs> I re <coughs> And I remember saying to him, "Is that brush to brush your arms? <laughs> Do you brush your arms with that brush?" And he kind of, he did. He, I don't think he took that too well. Um, and then you know, and then and then the the, the interview just descended into you know because we were me and Sean were seriously losing altitude. You know, we were like, you know, I think I think a concoction of sort of tequila and weed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we began, began really kind of kicking in at that moment. You know what we really we didn't need breakfast TV. We needed bed, um, <laughs> and 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 I think it just descended into probably. I, I, I know I know for a fact that Lorraine Kelly in her in Lorraine Kelly's autobiography it say she says that the Soup Dragons was the worst interview that she'd ever <laughs> done in her life. So that's kind of good, um, <laughs> you know, and a. Uh, and after it, you know, um, um, you know, when we were leaving, you know, uh, I, I think, I think the message that we were getting led off the premises and stuff like that, I think that was, I think that was relayed to Sean. You know, I certainly don't remember that being said to me. Uh, <laughs> I, so I don't know if it was just Sean that was barred, you know, or if, it, or if it was, if it was both of us, or if it was the band, you know. Um, but that's what happened that morning. You know, it was just a. Yeah, it was just a pretty. It was a pretty uh, crazy morning, you know. But so uh, you've never been, you've never been back. <laughs> so like studio, I, so like. No, I, um, I can't remember. I, uh, I think I was back. You know, I think I think I went back. You know, 
I don't know if I went back with the fan club or whatever, you know, but I certainly yeah. did BBC things after that, you know. Uh, yeah. I never I, I never did another interview with uh, Lorraine Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> 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 that, that's all right. That's okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I can live with that. I can live with that. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Well, Neil just said they'd love to see the full interview, but I think it is only like clips of it on the uh, on YouTube or on uh, online. So yeah. that would be nice. Right. Yeah. So we'll talk about teenage fan club because I was saying um I was saying to you before we got um before we went live that this is the band that I actually missed out on. It was like big time because every time I post it on Facebook lots of people just say you know comments that like it's, it's like for the best band i mean um oasis uh liam gallagher said apparently this is on, um, on according to wikipedia that he said it's the second best band in the world second yeah. only to oasis yeah <laughs> no i mean you know I, 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 I can absolutely I can confirm that that Liam <laughs> that Liam did say that uh, yeah. Liam did say that yeah could you it, it, it was in um it was in Air Studios in London that he actually said that you know and I did hear him he, he was right in front of me I did hear him say that you know um Liam's a good guy yeah you know, Liam, yeah Liam's Liam's a good Liam's a really a really a really good guy you know a really good guy and he did say that you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I know that. Um, I mean, in previous, um, even before that, we had met. You know, Noel. I remember meeting Noel on a few occasions, and Noel was a massive. You know, Noel was a big, big. I, I don't know if he still is. You know, um, it was a massive teenage fan club fan. As was Liam. You know, Liam. Yeah. I, rem I remember Liam particularly um, loved um, mellowed out. You know, a track called Mellow Doubt, you know, Liam just says it was just a brilliant, brilliant song, you know. So, yeah, those two guys were, were, were big bands, you know. Yeah. They're, yeah, I mean, they're a pretty... They're and a also pretty, Kurt Cobain. Apparently, apparently, Kurt Cobain said it's the best band in the world. Yeah. So he also, he was also a massive fan of Teenage Yeah, Club. yeah, Kurt, Kurt was a massive fan. He knew... Wow. He knew a lot of the... He knew the guys in the band. The band had toured with Nirvana. Um, you know, so Kurt was a massive fan, you know, uh, you know, I know that, and you know, sort of one of those bands that are um, sort of revered by other bands, you know, that are, you know, um, yeah. you know, they're a good band, you know, you know, I mean, I, you know, it's pretty difficult for me to say the band that I was in and they recorded three albums, like, oh yeah, well, we're fucking amazing, you know, but um <laughs> But um, you... I mean, they were. I mean, you know, certainly, uh, they, there's some great songs there. You know, there's some great records. They made some great records. I mean, and I just, I think, um, you know, I mean, you know, pe personally, and it's nothing to do with the fact that I was in that that I was in the band at this particular time. You know, but I certainly think that. Um, and you know, people may argue and people may have their different opinions, but I'm as um, you know, just a guy that was sort of yeah. I didn't have anything to do with the songwriting, um, and yeah. I didn't have anything to do with any of the kind of production in the studios. I, 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 my, my gig was basically to play drums Don't to the songs that. that they were writing, and yeah. and I think at that time I just and it just like just sheer luck in my part rather that i think they were when i was in the band i think was a was a kind of pinnacle of their songwriting of those guys songwriting you know um there's actually a middle one there there's there's actually, and there's, right and, and there's also a, an album called songs from northern britain which so there was Grand Prix, then songs from Northern Britain, then Howdy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got these from King B Records yesterday because, like I said, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> but I listened to them last night and yeah. I just thought, oh my God, it's, it's just amazing albums. So it's really, really good. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I think that, I think, 
and again, I'm you know I, I'm only talking regards songs. You know, I'm not talking about you know drumming or whatever. You know, I think that I think they're great. I think those three records were sort of the pinnacle of those guys' songwriting. You know, yeah. you know, and great records to play on. You know, really great, um, great records to play on. Um, yeah, and, and I just played to the song. You know, so. As as a as a drummer that that just you know I'm not a, uh, what I would say a drummy drummer you know a technician and stuff like that and I wasn't too much into pra uh, practicing playing drums or um, I just I I, I kind of like to be in a room with another two or three people and play you know yeah, yeah it's a kind of you know it's a it's a you know a, a, drums to me are, a, are very much an accompanying instrument. You know they're not a you know I'm not any drum solos or you know that's why you know I, I you know I, I mean you know tech you know technically of course you know guys like Neil Peart and uh, you know Billy Cobham and and people like that you know that are kind of revered drummers and you know I just never got those guys you know they they, they yeah. just it just didn't mean it just didn't mean anything to me. I think it, I think it, as technical as I got was I could kind of I, I got John Bonham. You know, you know. I, I think that because it was it was very much song based what he done. So, um, so have you not got any drumming heroes? Yeah. Oh yeah. My, <laughs> oh, yeah, my, drum, my, my, my drumming hero, without any question, is Hal Blaine. Um. From the Wrecking Crew, you know, um, who played on. I've got to check them out then. I was like, Come on, <laughs> you're, you're, a drumming pod, you're a drumming podcast, and you've never heard of Hal Blaine. You know? I mean, how? I mean, Hal Blaine is probably the most recorded drummer of all time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Well, um, yeah, I like learning something new over different people. Yeah, like. I mean, Hal Blaine record. I mean. Well, just to give you an idea of what Hal Blaine played on, he played on most of the Beach Boys records. Um, he played on most of the Birds records, all the Monkeys records, the Mamas and the Papas, Frank Sinatra, Elvis. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. You know, yeah, the, list, yeah. the list. You know, the list is endless that Hal Blaine. Wow. Played on, oh, you know, definitely, so. yeah, I'll definitely sort of like Google yeah, him. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I want to say hello to Trevor Palmer. He's he said that songs from Northern Britain in thirteen are his favorite. So oh, he right, is. okay. Well, there you go. It's a there's a a perfect example of you know someone's opinion. You know that you know obviously bandwagon esque thirteen um were before. Me, that was a guy called Brendan O'Hare, um, and 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 again, great songs. I mean, you know, I think great songs. I think the thing when, you know, certainly when I joined Teenage Fan Club, I think I don't know. I mean, I think the it, it wasn't as, um, you know, the production was a, you know, it was probably a bit slicker. Um, in production, um, I think those records, I think, but like Bandwagon esque, uh, 13 are a bit, you know, which which are great records. I'm not knocking them yeah, in any yeah. way, are, are a bit more punk rock, uh, in the way that they sound, uh, sonically, yeah. um, you know. So, but I mean, the Teenage Fan Club have got a really loyal fan base, you know, um. And some people like that, you know, it's like any band, you know, I like that period. I prefer yeah, that yeah. period, you know, I like this it's, period, you know. Yeah, it's and, like and, with the and, Dragon. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah I, I like know. the period of Love Garden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, and then there's people that will, that, that will much prefer uh, yeah, the, yeah, early yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, uh, the early Soup Dragon stuff where it was yeah, Frost, yeah. it was playing drums, you know. But I think that's absolutely, you know, I think that's, I think that just sort of shows you what or how um, influential a drummer can be. Yeah, to a, yeah, to a, yeah. To a band, you know, it's you know, it's like you know, it's like when Charlie Watts died. Eh, God rest him. Um, 
you know, for me, the stone should have just says, right, that's oh, it. Yeah, you that's know, it's done. Thing, yeah. You know, Charlie's gone, you know. We're never going to ever sound like the Rolling Stones again because they never will sound like the Rolling Stones that everybody yeah. knows, you know. So, and again, there might be people that love the period of bandwagon-esque, 13, and, and for them, that is that is what Teenage Fan Club is. There's other, yeah. people, there's other people that will be like, you know, Grand Prix, Songs of Northern Britain, Howdy, that is what I think Teenage Fan Club is. And then the albums after uh, I left and Francis started playing with the band for the second time, um, that that's a period that they like, you know. So, and that's great because that's that's what music's about, you know. It's about opinions and and how 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 uh, music makes you feel at a certain time and stuff, you know. So, yeah. Um, when they did this sort of like, um, is it like a creation creation sort of like? Uh, yeah, two. Yeah. It's yeah, like three nights, so like uh, three consecutive nights playing all these. Yeah, yeah. Things. I mean, that basically what you know, that that was in a uh, 2018. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and but that I mean, I had left Teenage Fan Club in in 2000, 2000. You know, right after we recorded Howdy, um, I left the band. Um, so I didn't even play Howdy live ever. Um, after we recorded it, yeah, yeah, and then sort of they were. I think it was uh, Sony were looking to re-release the records that the band had done via Creation, and um, there was a tour. They had set up a tour, um, or they had asked the guys if they wanted to do something to promote the re-releases. Um, Norman got in contact with me and asked me if I wanted to do it, which of course I said yeah. Because uh, it had just been a bit of fun, and I hadn't played yeah, with the guys yeah. for a long time, and then so we did. I think we did. I think we did something like fourteen shows in the UK. So it was like we did Barlands in Glasgow three nights. Yeah. So, so it was like I think we did. I think it was like Glasgow, Birmingham. Did you do Manchester as well? Manchester, yeah, yeah. and London. And we did three nights. So the first night was um, bandwagon esque and thirteen, and then the second night it was Grand Prix and then songs from Northern Britain, and the third night it was Howdy and a kind of collection of the B sides and stuff like that 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 yeah, we had probably yeah. over that time. So, so yeah, I mean that was that 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 was good. That was good. Yeah. That was good. Because my friend, my friend Peter Baird, he said that he went to three nights in a row in Barrowlands as well, and he saw you play, and he said you, you're you're amazing and stuff. Oh, so you played in all of them. So, um, Kaz, Kaz Harris said that um, I've been one of the royal fans since the first single came out. Uh, saw lots of gigs with Paul as well. So. Oh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. really nice. And, yeah, and Trevor said that the Who never sounded right after Keith Moon died either. So yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just it's 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 one of those things. I've got uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's you know a, a yeah. band. You know, you know. It's, I, I just think that that's sort of just when you sort of say that. I think that 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 is um that is kind of what a drummer can bring to a band. You know. Um, yeah. you know. Well, we've got to like talk about the primary five because yeah. <laughs> this is like really new to me. And I really, really love your voice. I, oh. I messaged you last night because I was like, mm. oh my God, you know, I'm just, I'm really in love with this records and stuff. But wow. um, I uh, checked Wikipedia again and uh, apparently it says the name referred to the band being the fifth that you played in yeah um so this is the, the soup dragons and teenage fan club so what were the, yeah. what were the other two <laughs> the other, the, yeah the other bands were bands early bands that, uh, that, that 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 i was in before um the soup dragons and stuff you know so uh you know just sort of yeah just yeah, yeah 
Rubbish the, plant. Yeah, it just, plant. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was just, yeah. So it was. Uh, I think I was. Yeah. I mean, the names are really rubbish. Uh, I think the first <laughs> band that I was in uh, uh, was called Finding Faust. <laughs> um, and then I, the the band the band that and it was basically the same band. We just changed our name. Was called um, Jesus Monroe. You know, wow. <laughs> so so that was the two bands, um, and thankfully, you know, yeah, thankfully yeah. Sean came along and uh, <laughs> gave the day for me, you know, and uh, plucked me, plucked, plucked out of uh, the, the, yeah, uh, those shite band names, you know. <laughs> um, well, and, also, according to Wikipedia, on the first of November two thousand and ten, you announced that. The primary five was officially defunct. It was like, yeah. no, yeah, is that is that correct? So there's no more, no more the mm. primary five. No, I mean, the primary five to me was, I mean, the primary five was never. It was everything that the primary five did was was kind of it, it just kind of happened, you know. It wasn't there was no intention for. For me to do anything, you know, um, I never really, you know, I didn't leave Teenage Fan Club with this mm. uh, perception of me as a songwriter and me yeah. as a singer. And, you know, I left Teenage Fan Club and became a postman um, because I wanted to, I just wanted to do something that was really normal, you know. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, oh, and I, so I, I, cool. yeah. And I became a fucking, I, I became a postman. Well, um, one of the songs that actually saw like yeah, it's mailman. 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 Yeah, <laughs> that's really good. That mailman. Yeah, song. yeah. Well, I wrote that. I wrote that one morning when I was what when I was doing my um my um, walk as Round, they call it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So there was no uh, preconceptions. You know, is it the primary five just ha primary five started off as um I think it was. See, I think I'd written three songs, and I'd never written any songs before that. I'd never written any songs before that, and I was introduced to this young guy, a guy called Ryan Curry, um, who asked me what I was doing, and I, you know, the, the, you know, long story short, me and Ryan ended up sort of working together. Um, I had said that I thought. That had a couple of songs. I wasn't sure if they even were songs. I played them to Ryan. Ryan loved them, um, yeah. and from that, um, you know, from that we we begged, borrowed, and stole equi enough equipment that we could go into a sort of it was a kind of almost like a disused um, community hall, you know, just a a community center hall yeah. that wasn't yeah. getting used. We set up the equipment. I was still working as a postman at that time, so um, I, I, I would I would do my walk in the morning, do my my job, and from there I would go straight to the studio, and we would and, record and we would record. And Ryan had a job that started later on in the afternoon, so we only had like I think we had like three or four hours each day, and um, and we just went and and we just went. We worked in these songs and. Um, we ended up we my, my I wanted to get a singer, um, and we auditioned a few people. Uh, we had all the backing tracks all done, blah blah blah. Yeah. And and Ryan, it was Ryan's suggestion. He Ryan had said, "Why don't you just Why don't you just do the vocals so that we've got the vocals done?" And yeah. I and I really didn't want to do the vocals, uh, but anyway, you know. We, I ended up, I did the vocals, you know, um, and and I sent up and I and and one of my friends, a guy that a, a guy that, had, that I'd worked with with the fan club and stuff like that, a guy called Nick Brown, who works at Rockpool Studios in Wales, um, yeah. you know, Nick um, had contacted me and said, um, "Oh, I heard that you've got, I heard that you've got some songs, you know, I'd love to hear them." I sent them to him. It was only two or three songs I sent to Nick. And Nick at that time was working with Oasis, um, and he was during a sort of break. He was sort of listening 
to the tracks. Yeah, yeah. And Paul McGuigan, you know, Gwigs from yeah, Oasis, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, Gwigs, yeah. Was in, Gwigs came into the room and, you know, and he was like, oh, what's this? You know, and, and Nick was saying, oh, it's a friend of mine, it's his band, da, da, da. I just recorded these and, you know, and um, Gwigs was like, these are great, this is brilliant, you know, um, and, it, you know, and then it was like, because we didn't have any budget, we didn't have any record company behind us or anything like that, you know, so... Uh, Paul, as I know him, you know, Gwigs um, invited us down to his home studio in uh, London. So we oh, went yeah. so we, so me and Ryan went down uh, to Gwigs' house in in a in a London for about ten days, um, and finished off these recordings and sort of Nick, uh, Nick mixed them and. And stuff like that, you know, and those, and that was North Pole. That that was what the first, yeah, the first, the first album North was North, yeah, 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 was North Pole. And I, <clears throat> from a a release point of view and stuff like that, you know, um, you know, the way <coughs> that I had seen it was, I didn't really want to go down the route of sending demos off to record labels and so. I mean, I I knew a lot of people in the music industry and stuff, but. I didn't want to go down that route of sending things off and, you know, trying to get a record deal or anything like that, you know, yeah. um, you know, because I, because I also seen it as, you know, this guy was a drummer in the Soup Dragons and the Teenage Band Club and then he leaves Teenage Band Club and he goes and he starts, he, all, he suddenly becomes a, a fucking singer songwriter, you know, and, and that just wasn't what, that just wasn't what I had in mind, you know, so I decided just to, uh, invest a bit of money, get a run of CDs made up, and and basically started my own record label, which was called Bell Beat Music. Bell Beat, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and from that, I managed to, um, you know, it, it was crazy actually. I actually managed to uh, get enough uh, licenses. You know, I, I began licensing the record. Uh, I think I licensed it in Japan, in a, in Korea, and um, in the States, uh-huh. and then, yeah, you know, yeah. so I was getting all these sort of uh, small license uh, deals in sort of worldwide, yeah. you know. So, um, so it's like, oh, this is this is pretty cool, you know. So, in your own way, you've got you've sort of created a distribution for the record, you know, without yeah, creating yeah. your own distribution, um, yeah. and and. Um, and that record went on to sell about ten thousand copies. That's, that's just amazing. Crazy, <laughs> absolutely fucking crazy, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you know, you know. Well, how did how well did it do in the UK? I mean, it done great. In the, I mean, it done great in the UK. What I done in the UK? What the distribution in the UK was me sitting in my bedroom getting I'd set up a website. People were emailing orders, and and it was me and my kids that were oh, uh, sitting, okay, putting yeah. in, sitting putting them in a bag and stuff. And then, yeah, yeah. you know, we, uh, I, I I think it was Fop, the record label, uh, the record shop Fop. Yeah, yeah, but just Fop um, H and V, isn't it? Yeah, is well, like, yeah, well, yeah, but yeah. kind of before that, um, the guy, the guy that kind of ran the dis- the the guy that ran the distribution and sales for Fop contacted yeah. me. You know, and says, um, you know, we would really like to take a stock of this record. You know, um, so I think they took about fifteen hundred records, wow. um, and it sold. You know, um, and 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 that was that. You know, yeah. that, that did, did you actually go on tour? Because another friend of mine, yeah. friend, said that he saw you as the primary yeah. five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that first record, that first record. We did um, again. It was not my intention for it to be a band, you know. And um, but, but you know, we were getting requests. You know, we were getting people. People were contacting me and sort of, you know, asking me if I wanted to do shows and yeah. yeah. And um, and I think the first thing that we ever did was we did a a a, 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 a show. It was a BBC radio show for Vic Galloway. Uh, oh. Which is quite a big, which is quite a big show in Scotland, you know. I mean, it's yeah, yeah it's a quite a big show. So that was the first thing that we ever did, 
um, which is quite bizarre. And then we did, I think we did a show in King Tut's, which sold out. Um, you know, so it was, so, so it went pretty well. And then we got, um, we did sort of bits and bobs here, there, and everywhere. And then we got um, for that album uh, when Arthur Lee and Love. You know the band Love? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they were touring the UK and um, we got asked to support Love on tour. Um, oh my God. Yeah, so we, so, so we did. Um, yeah, so we did. Um, oh so, so we did a UK tour supporting Love uh, with Arthur Lee. And what the really great thing about that tour, I can always remember this, was John Eccles, who was the original guitar player in yeah. Love. He was on. He played on that tour, which was great. I mean, they were they were amazing. I mean, you know, they were uh, amazing. That group. What the one with Mick Head, like the Shark, you know, like with the Head Brothers, Mick Head and John Head. Was it? Were they playing around the same time with Love? Or no, no, no. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Not on that. Certainly not on that tour. You know, I remember. Um, you know, no, it was just us and love. Yeah, and yeah. We did that. We did a full UK tour, so that was great. That was really great. And then, oh my god! You know, uh, and then we sort of, we did, you know, it, it kind of went on to we made an, we made the second record, which was Go. Go, yeah, uh, yeah, which was um, which was released on Reaction Recordings, I think it was called, um. And I think so, you know, I think we had a bit I think we had a budget for that record. Um yeah. I think we got some um at that time it was called Scottish Arts Council, uh, which now which now is uh, Creative Scotland. Um oh, okay. yeah, so yeah. We got, I think I think we made that I think we made that record for like five grand or something. I think that's how much, you know, and it was Nick Brown that, that made that record and we made it between the original studio that we had recorded, North Poland and Rockfield. Um, and again, that record, you know, it, it did it did okay. No, it didn't do as well as North Pole, you know. The um, yeah. it, 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 no, it didn't do that. And I think that was down to, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I don't know if that was, I think it, I think it was just, I mean, I wish now, looking back, I wish I would have just released that record in the same way that I had released North Pole. Oh, oh see, yeah, yeah. Without a record label, you know, because I, you yeah, know, yeah. I, you know, uh, you know, it's like anything. The, the, the primary five, it was kind of my, it was kind of my thing, you know, and and um, and the way that we did North Pole really worked, you know, and, and, and as far as you know, obtaining licenses abroad. And the mm, U, yeah. you know, like in the US, Australia, blah 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 blah, and it was like small record labels in the states and Australia and Japan blah, blah, that was dealing. So they were dealing with their own distribution and stuff, and it, and that's why that record sold a lot. And I think, yeah. you know, in hindsight, you know, I wish I would have done that with with the second with Go with, with the oh. second and the third, you know, and I the third one and yeah. the third, which was High Five, you know, um, yeah. And I think the, you know, I think the, you know, the whole thing sort of came to an end. I think that I think the whole thing came to an end for me personally when, you know, it was a, a, a sort of, there was a few things that sort of came into it, you know, um, when um, that's my wife just she just oh. got to work. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, Hi. Um, she, she, um, yeah, so, uh, there's quite a few things, you know. I, I, I never felt comfortable being this sort of singer in a band. That was one, yeah. you know, I never ever felt comfortable being at the front so of a is band. There, is there no plans of reforming? Maybe. No, I mean, I've got no. Um, I mean, there, there has been talk recently of yeah. um, maybe a single. Coming out, um, oh, wow. you know, via friends label, um, and that that kind of appeals to me. You know, 
that you know just a kind of one-off i don't think i would i'm not really into the the album thing you know? all, yeah. i wouldn't do that you know and i don't really you know the going and playing live uh thing for me uh, i don't know if i would do that but who knows i mean who knows i'm not sort of, I'm, 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 you know never say never never say never yeah that's you know, right. never, never say never you know but um yeah so there may be uh there may be a single uh, in the not too distant future. Yeah, and myself. And the primary five. The primary five is kind of you know, it was never meant to be a band or anything. It was just it was just my vehicle for for releasing songs. You know, so yeah. very much like the BMX bandits. You know that that I've always had this ever changing lineup of musicians behind it. But the mainstay is Douglas. You know, yeah, and, right, and it's yeah. just, well that's 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 kind of really what. The primary five is, you know, to me, right. you know. Yeah. Well, Kaz, Kaz, Kazara said that um, I'm a big fan of Primary Five too. Love all albums. Still waiting for new songs. Yeah. And um, got the first album on CD in Tokyo when it came out. And one of my favorite albums. That's what Kaz said. Yeah, oh, thank Yeah, I know that you've got a Zoom meeting soon. But I also can I just ask you about your collaboration with Astrid because this is like a yeah. Really small yeah, this this is a really recent thing. Yeah, um, yeah. again, that was just um, I, I I I I'd never met um, I I'd, I knew sort of I'd heard the name Astrid and stuff like that. I was I wasn't really that familiar with with what they did, um, but um, I sort of just was introduced recently to Charlie and Willie, yeah. who are the, who are the two guys from Astrid. Um, and um, and I met up with Charlie um, in Glasgow over, just for a coffee, and um, and um, the you know they were basically Charlie just sort of says you know we've we've got this track you know would you like to we would love you to play drums on it um, you know would you be up for it you know and it was really just. It, it wasn't it wasn't a sort of big deal or anything, you know. It was just um, they asked me to do it, and I said yeah. Went into the studio, went into a, a studio in Glasgow called Dystopia, um, Stopian, uh, where a guy called Jason Shaw, um, uh, producing the, the record. Um, it just went in. It was just myself and Charlie, and a and a, a guy called James Clifford playing bass. Um, yeah. Um, just and, and 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 at this time I hadn't played I hadn't been behind a drum kit for from 2018. Yeah, through, yeah. So this was like, like yeah, yeah. So this was like sort of like the end of last year that we went into the studio and so you know feeling a bit rusty and stuff like that you know and um, and, and and basically recorded um, through the darkness of your life which yeah. was which was released on No Big Deal records on the 21st friday the 21st of january um which is charlie's own label um oh, yeah. so yeah so and it's it's available as a seven inch vinyl as well isn't it it's a real, i think it's a limited run uh, i think yeah. yeah i think it's a limited edition run of seven inch singles you know i think you, yeah, I, yeah. I mean i'm not quite sure the the connotations and how you purchase it but i'm quite sure if you if you look up uh, no the big deal records yeah. or the band's website, yeah. you'll, be, you'll be able to find out how yeah. you can purchase a seven inch. You know, I'm looking forward to yeah. getting that seven inch as well. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I, saw them, I think I told you that I saw them at Shine On in 2019, and that was yeah. the first time I've actually seen them. Yeah, and they're look, I mean, they're lovely. Charlie and Willie yeah, are really nice just the loveliest of people, you know, they're really lovely people, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I think the manager is called Tom Coyle. Oh, like, Tom. Oh, yeah. Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a regular yeah. China. He's a lovely, lovely person, yeah. Tom Coyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've known Tom. But I think I've known Tom most of my life, you know. Tom's just... Tom's is Tom just, from Bells Hill? No, Tom's from Glasgow. But, I mean, okay. even the even the bands that I was in, um, you know, when I mentioned the band Jesus Monroe, Oh yeah, was, yeah. It, it was Tam that put on Jesus Monroe's first concert. 
Oh, it was, yeah, Tam was a promoter, you know, and it was Tam that, you know, I've always, you know, I've, I've always got on with Tam, you know, he's a good, a really good yeah, guy. He's, he's a cracking guy, he's a brilliant guy. He's, yeah. he's a, Tam is a Scottish music industry legend, you know, he's, he's, he's just the, the sweetest guy, you know. Yeah, I love seeing you at Cheyenne because every year when they go there, so like, oh, it's, it's that, that's where I see, that's where I see Tom Coyle in my oh, head. He's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's, well, he's a great, he's a great man. Yeah, well, thank you. Well, I've met Jim McCulloch from the Soup Dragons. Now, yeah. when when can I see you? Do you have any gigging plans this year? Uh, I think there may. I think Astrid they're talking about doing some shows. And will you be playing? Uh, I, I know, I know that they're doing, they're doing some some Scottish shows soon, uh, and I think that it, I think that's that it's only Charlie and Willie that are doing those. I think it's just an acoustic type acoustic. thing. Yeah. Um, but I know that they've got. Um, I know that there's plans in the pipeline for a full uh, band tour. Uh, I, I don't know whether it's the UK or Scottish. I mean, I don't know. You would be. You know, Astrid or Willie and Charlie would be better uh, equipped. That's my wife right there. She's got. Hi. Hello. Uh, <laughs> um, she's she's um yeah yeah. So they'll be better equipped to let you know sort of what's um. Well, what's... I do. I really do hope that I'll get to meet you someday. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure you shall. I'll get you to sign my records as well. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, I'll send your records for you, Anna. I'll do that. I'll do that. All right. Well, I know you've got your Zoom meeting, so thank yeah. you very, very much. No oh, problem at all, Anna. Pleasure. It's just so nice. And oh, oh, Kaz also said looking forward to the single. So please keep oh. us updated, Paul. So. Yeah. So do you want to just say all so like last words were? Uh, um, the, our friends who have joined us and also people watching it later on YouTube. Yeah, just thanks for um, listening in and, um, you know, I hope I didn't talk too much shit. Um, <laughs> no, and I hope you say it. <laughs> and keep, and keep, uh, and, and do like Ask the Drummer uh, oh. podcast and keep watching. Uh, Anna's doing a great thing, you know. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Paul Quinn. Oh, my God. I, hope so. I really hope someday I'll get to see you. I will. You, 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 may, you may well. You may well. <laughs> thank you. Okay, Anna. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Cheers, bye. 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 Oh, my God. Isn't he lovely? <laughs> thank you so much, everyone, for joining us live. Um, oh my god, that was just so good. I was like, I'm always so like, I'm saying I'm in love because I'm in love, God. This is just such an amazing album. So, thank you very, very much. Like I said, I feel like 21 again, so like fun girl. <laughs> so, um, I have enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, please keep an eye out for next week's guest announcement post. And remember, love music, love life, and love, love, love drummers. I love Paul Quinn. I mean, you know, hopefully he will play this year. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him. So thank you, everyone. See you next week. Bye. Bye.